Hey everybody! So I wanted to do a quick video today on some of the seed varieties that I'm really excited to plant this year. Right now it's January here, but this is the time when you want to get some of your seeds started and prepared so that you can plant them indoors at the appropriate time. And it's always kind of an exciting type of year because it's dreary, we're in the middle of winter, and then you get to plan out your summer garden and think of what it's going to look like and everything that you want to have in it this year. So these are some of my favorite varieties, things that I'm sure to have on hand. They're all going to be from Baker Creek, which is my preferred seed outlet, and I love them because they have high quality seed, they have great business practices, they're great people, they have incredible heirloom non-GMO varieties. So the first one I'm going to talk about are common chives. So these guys will grow almost anywhere. They will grow in the spring and be the first thing up in the spring for you to enjoy in your salads, and they'll be one of the last things that dies off in the fall. They're also a perennial, so they'll come back next year for you as well. So if you don't have a container of these, these are great to have. They do really well in containers, which saves real estate in your garden, but they also will spread. So keeping them in a nice container to have year after year is actually ideal for these. Very easy to grow. They get these pretty purple flowers on them twice a year. Pollinators love them. A great variety for any garden. The next one, is my favorite type of radish. And I love growing radishes because radishes are one of the first things you'll eat from your garden. They only take about 30 days to come in. And so in 30 days, you'll have your first vegetable on your table, great in salads. They're also great roasted or grilled. Um, I have a great radish and potato soup recipe that I always make and I love. And these early scarlet globes are one of my favorite varieties. They're consistent, they don't get super spicy, they get to a great size, beautiful vegetables, really strong roots. Um, you can also eat the greens off of these guys too. So if they're baby greens, if they're little, you can enjoy them in salads. Once they get a little bit bigger, then you can enjoy them sauteed or added to soups. Excellent variety. Definitely recommend the early scarlet glow radishes. The next thing I'm going to talk about are carrots, and carrots are always fun to grow. I love these little Parisian carrots. They stay small like this. They're kind of like a little ball. These guys are great because they don't take nearly as long to grow as some of the longer, larger carrots do. So these are terrific to put in your soil. You'll have a great variety of them. They don't take up much space. These can also be put in a container. So highly recommend these guys. Next up is one of my spring and fall favorites and that's beets. I love beets. I love them roasted, pickled, sliced extremely thin on salads. And these golden beets are one of my favorites just because they have such a bright, vibrant color to them. Slightly different from other varieties of beets you'll get, which are usually in the red family. So these make a striking complement to those. These also, I think, have a milder, sweeter taste to them. So we always plant some golden beets with our red ones. Love these guys. And lastly, for our spring vegetables are these types of kale that I have. This one is scarlet kale. There's a few different varieties. I love them all, but I especially love the scarlet kale because it has this great color. So you get this great purple. Sometimes mine turns out a little more reddish pop of color in your spring garden. And when mostly you're getting just greens, this is kind of a refreshing color mix. Again, you can eat them as baby greens. You can saute them once they're bigger. These make excellent kale chips. So the scarlet kale, again, one of my favorites. Then moving into some spinach, I wanted to talk today about spinach substitutes or different types of spinach. I usually will plant a traditional Bloomsdale um, or one of those traditional spinach varieties in my garden because I love spinach, but they do bolt really quickly, meaning once it gets a little bit warm, they want to go to flower and then you're losing the quality and integrity of those leaves. There are substitutes to that that do very well in the heat. And the first one I'll talk about is this strawberry spinach. So these are really fun. They actually get little red berries on them, so you can enjoy those. And then the leaves have a nice spinach flavor, so you get the benefits and kind of the best of both worlds. A really ornate variety, so if you wanted to add something edible to a flower garden, these are absolutely beautiful. Very old variety, very pretty, nice leaves, and plus you get that little bonus pop of color. The next one I want to talk about is amaranth. And this is Chinese multicolor spinach. These are bigger leaves. Again, you can harvest them as baby greens if you prefer. But these have great color. These look really similar in color to some types of coleus. So again, if you have a flower garden and you're wanting to get something edible in there, this is great for a nice background, a good border, and this is going to be more heat tolerant. So you'll get that spinach flavor all summer. The next one is perpetual spinach and auroch. 
And I'm going to pair these two together because both of these guys are going to last well into the summer. They're very, very heat tolerant. You, there's really not a good picture of the perpetual spinach, but it's actually a type of Swiss chard that has more of a spinach flavor to it. Great variety. And this one, the Auroch, is incredible colors. These leaves are just beautiful. And again, something that is very ornate as well as very tasty. So both of these are great if you like your leafy greens. Then a few that I have in play waiting for summer. First one is these Muncher cucumbers. So I can as well as eat them in salads. So I need something that can be good as a slicing cucumber and also when it's small, be good for pickling and these fit the bill. They seem much more disease resistant than other varieties. So I absolutely recommend the Muncher cucumber. Great little cucumbers, your plant, you'll have one and it'll last you and produce for you all season long. Next up, and if you've followed me for long, you'll hear me talk about these quite a bit, are loofah gourds. So as you can see here, they do indeed grow these loofah sponges at the end of the year, which is really cool and unique. But one of the reasons I love growing these is because they're climbing, they'll climb any kind of a fence. We even had one climb up the side of one of our trees last year, and they get these beautiful yellow flowers about that big on them. And those flowers attract pollinators like crazy. And you want pollinators in your garden so that your peppers and squash and things that come later are gonna be visiting your garden more often. So secure these seeds early on. You only have to buy one packet because after that you'll have enough lupus seeds every year just to replant and reharvest. Really fun to grow. These guys are great to give it gifts as gifts at Christmas. So highly recommend lupus. And then the last one that I made sure to get early in case Baker Creek runs out are these Chinese red noodle long beans. These are an incredibly popular variety for them and they are by far my favorite bean I've ever grown. You can see by the image there, they get very long, about a foot long. What's really nice about them is they have a beautiful green bean flavor to them, kind of that traditional flavor, but you don't have to cut off the ends of 100 green beans. You just have maybe 10 or 15 of these long beans. They were extremely prolific very attractive plant. They climb so you can get them up off the ground, save yourself some real estate for some other plants. And they have these pretty almost pearlescent pinkish white flowers on them. So a great ornate variety as well. So if you're wanting a disease resistant variety that grows exceptionally well, these are the seeds for you, definitely. So those are just some recommendations early on. We'll have some more varieties coming in for summer planting, but now is the time of year to get your seeds. And of course, we're here. If you have questions about if varieties are good for you, just let us know. Post on our Facebook page, on Instagram, and we'll get back to you. So happy seed starting, everybody. Enjoy the beginning of a new year of gardening, and we'll see you again soon.